What's up fellas, in the second video of today, we're gonna be doing something that I kind of plan on doing over the next couple weeks, and that's just kind of having a roundup video of all the trade rumors being flown around in the NBA right now. These are the five biggest ones that I could find. I looked through a whole bunch of different articles, tried to find different trade rumors that had some legitimacy, and we're gonna be talking about each one of those in today's video. But really quickly before we get started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every single day on this channel. It's the most consistent NBA content on YouTube. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Tucker. By the way, you guys can leave a like rating on the video as well if you're enjoying it, and check me out at various socials and a link tree link in the description below. With those things said, Let's go ahead and get started. So the first rumor here is something we've talked about, uh, you know, a little bit recently. That's the possibility of Kyle Lowry going to the Philadelphia 76ers. There's multiple rumors saying that this is a legitimate thing. It's one of the most legitimate rumors out there right now. And it appears as though Kyle Lowry of all the other teams would prefer if moved from Toronto to go to Philadelphia. There's a couple of reasons for that. He's obviously familiar with the area, but of course it's a team that's playing really well. It's a team that wouldn't have to give up necessarily a ton in terms of their current roster to make it happen with him. And he fits right in. You've got Harris and Bede, Simmons, Curry, and Lowry. And that's arguably the best five man unit in the entire East. I, I mean, I think you could make the argument that that is, you know, a group that just fits incredibly, incredibly well together. The problem is, we don't really know if Toronto wants to keep Kyle Lowry or not. It kind of was a foregone conclusion early in the year that they were going to be making some moves. They've started playing really well lately, but then they ended up having to stop playing games because of everything going on. So they are in such an odd spot that it's really difficult to evaluate the actual possibility of Kyle Lowry being traded. But the important thing to pull out of this particular rumor is the fact that if he is traded, he would prefer Philly. There appears to be mutual interest there. I would assume that unless Toronto goes on to win like 10 games in a row before the deadline, if they continue to hover around 500 a little bit over it, I would, I, my personal guess would be that Kyle Lowry does end up as a Philadelphia 76er before the trade deadline. We'll see what happens, but I think it just makes too much sense for both teams to end up making that happen. There's salary filler you can throw in, you know, Danny Green plus stuff to Toronto. Um, and then Philly gets a guy that I think can legitimately push them towards, you know, a finals appearance this season, which is something that I don't think Daryl Morey is going to, is going to pass up on. So next up now though, on the rumor list is about the Boston Celtics. And again, I went around and looked at multiple articles. The consensus seems to be that Boston is actually going to make a move this time. They've got the trade exception. They've got, you know, some picks they can offer. They've got some young guys they can offer. The consensus seems to be Boston is going to actually do something this time. They're not going to just wait around and, 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 you know, be left waiting and not having made a move. They're going to do something. They're playing a little bit better. Kemba's playing a little bit better. And they're clearly, you know, a move away from still being a really, really good team in the Eastern Conference. And the consensus seems to be that whether it's Buddy Heald or, or Harrison Barnes from Sacramento, if, you know, using the, the trade exception that they have, or any number of, uh, of different options that they have, around the, you know, around the league. The consensus seems to be make a move, get Marcus Smart back and fully healthy. Kemba appears to be playing better and you can put together a pretty good five-man group pretty quickly. There's some Robert Williams buzz there in Boston as well that he's, you know, starting to play really well uh, as kind of the five-man, I guess the five-man that they needed, I guess is the way you would phrase it. Um, so some interesting things happening in Boston. And again, the rumor here specifically is just, it seems like they're actually going to do something. Next up, let's get to some more specific stuff. Victor Oladipo, we've talked about him a lot lately. We talked about him in a Rockets rebuild video. We talked about him in terms of uh, him turning down an extension from Houston. And there's a lot of stuff if you go around and look about the fact that Victor Oladipo wants to be a member of the Miami Heat. And that is either via trade this year or in free agency in the offseason. And either of those are legitimate possibilities. Miami's going to have the salary cap space to sign Victor Oladipo in the offseason. They, of course, had bigger free agency plans initially. Uh, but with a lot of those other options taken up, if they feel like it's worthwhile to bring in Oladipo on the on a contract that he wants, I it kind of seems like it's almost inevitable at this point. Now, of course, they could make a move for him during the season this year if they wanted. And the idea of a Butler Oladipo backcourt is really, really intriguing to me. And I I, I really do want to see that. And I don't think they would have to necessarily give up a ton in terms of like their younger players and stuff if they wanted to trade for him from Houston. And if this was a different franchise, I would probably say that that would happen. But given the fact that it's Miami, if they have good intel on the fact that Victor Oladipo wants to be there, their free agency pitches are kind of legendary over the years. You can you know go back and look at Gordon Hayward stuff, nearly signing there rather than in Boston. Uh, you know, of course, the Miami Heat big three stuff. If they feel like Oladipo even halfway wants to come to Miami, they'll probably just wait until the offseason, see how he plays the rest of the year. And if they really want him, they'll probably get him this offseason, which again is a reason why if I'm Houston, I would try and instigate a trade as quickly as possible. And that feels like a... 
uh, looming disaster there in Houston, the fact that Victor Oladipo somehow became the centerpiece of a James Harden trade. So that's the other rumor here is Victor Oladipo probably ends up in Miami one way or another, either via trade or via free agency. Next up now, we've got a couple of New Orleans Pelicans rumors, and this is uh, interesting because we're doing a Pelicans trade machine tomorrow. Uh, I put the tweet out yesterday. I was asking for trade suggestions from you guys, and it's with an interesting little twist, uh, you know, which relates to our, our rumor here. And that's the fact that initially Lonzo Ball looked like a guy that was going to be on the trade block, and now it seems like New Orleans is, is really motivated to keep him. He's been playing really well. He's been shooting the ball extremely well. And that's the rumor here is the fact that the Pelicans are kind of reevaluating whether or not they actually want to move Lonzo Ball. And this is interesting for a couple of reasons. One, it's a very easily tradable salary. $11 million is a perfect like middling salary to offer as a part of a bigger deal, or you can send it to a different team. It doesn't require a lot for them to cobble together some salary filler. And so it was going to be pretty easy to trade away Lonzo Ball. This is also interesting because if he continues to play like this, he's going to demand a significant contract and restricted free agency. And that is can either be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing that he's playing well and that he's a real asset, but then you start thinking about what are we going to have to pay him? Is it going to be worth it? Are we going to have too much money invested or younger players between Lonzo and between Ingram and between the Zion Max eventually? And then the fact that, you know, Steven Adams is on a big contract, Eric Bledsoe is on a big contract, and suddenly New Orleans is in the luxury tax and you're looking around wondering what in the world happened. All those things need to be considered here when you're looking at a possible Lonzo ball trade or the possibility of New Orleans keeping him. Right now, the buzz seems to be that they've kind of gone back on this idea of trading Lonzo Ball, which is a really interesting wrinkle. I think he's a talented young player, and I think that you can make an argument that he's just going to be someone that's a bit of a late bloomer. And it was always about figuring out the jump shot, and you know the other stuff will come afterwards. And you know if he's going to keep shooting this well, he's going to demand a significant contract from somebody, um, and then it's going to be up to New Orleans to decide whether or not they want to match it. So again, think about some trade machine stuff. I would encourage you to think about trade machine stuff that does not involve Lonzo Ball, unless it's a part of a bigger like adding a star type deal because um, I think he's a really fun player. I think he's a player that New Orleans increasingly now wants to keep considering how he's been playing lately. And then the last up in terms of a rumor, again, specific to New Orleans is about JJ Redick. Hasn't been a ton of JJ Redick buzz. I don't think he's going to get bought out. I do think they're going to end up moving him in some way. And it seems like Denver is a team that would possibly be interested. JJ Redick is a guy that I think any veteran team or any, any team with younger players even would be interested in bringing in. He's a guy that brings leadership, experience, playoff experience, and can really shoot the basketball. And yes, he's getting up there in age, but it's not difficult to trade him from a salary perspective. And I think whether it's Boston or Philly or any number of teams, whether it be up in you know the Northeast or as this rumor uh, you know is specific to Denver, I think JJ Redick is someone that's absolutely going to get moved, and that's you know kind of why he's near the end here. So one of like the quote unquote biggest rumors. So those are the five. As I said, I want to do this every week. So send some stuff to me on Twitter um, if you guys see any rumor stuff that you want me to take a look at. Um, this was super fun. I just kind of go through and I look for different rumors and I look at different articles and see what's out there and see what feels legitimate to me. And these are the five right now. The fact that Kyle Lowry prefers Philly. I think Kyle Lowry is going to get moved to Philadelphia before the deadline. Uh, the Celtics are actually going to make a big move, reportedly. Um, I'll believe it when I see it, I guess, at this point, because we've been here a lot before. But they certainly have plenty of opportunity to. Uh, Victor Lodipo ending up in Miami one way or another is an interesting one, considering that there's so many different possibilities for Oladipo, and maybe he gets traded again this year from Houston to somewhere else and then still ends up in Miami. I think realistically... It just depends on Miami's uh, willingness to bring in Oladipo. If they want to sign him in the 2021 offseason to some kind of contract number, I think he's going there. It just depends on whether or not they want him. Uh, and then the New Orleans stuff. Lonzo and JJ uh, kind of going in opposite directions in terms of trade value as well as trade market. Uh, the Pelicans increasingly wanted to keep Lonzo. And then JJ Redick seemingly on his way out potentially to Denver, any of those teams in the Northeast, you know, Boston, Brooklyn, or Philadelphia. So like I said, send me any rumors that you guys might see floating around. Uh, this is really fun to kind of look at. Uh, this is what I love, all the trade stuff, trade machine stuff, anything like that. Um, and like I said, be sure to let me know when those things happen, as well as some trade machine suggestions, either in the comments or over on Twitter. But yeah, that is going to be the end of the second video of the day. And I thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, as I said in the beginning, my name is Tucker. If you missed any of my previous videos, then be sure to check out the boxes on screen, as well as check out more videos from me on the channel as a whole. If you missed the first video of the day, we talked about some really interesting James Harden stuff. An article came out kind of explaining some of the behind the scenes stuff about what exactly went down when the Rockets were looking to trade James Harden, the possibility that Miami and Philadelphia were in on it, but ultimately he was probably always gonna end up in Brooklyn. All those different little details are included in that video if you guys wanna go take a look at that. With all those things said though, 
Thank you guys for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Check out the various links in the link tree down in the description below. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you all next time.